Hi everyone, it's Elliot from TutorialEdge.net and in this tutorial we're going to be looking at the wonderful world of gRPC. Now I put up a poll earlier in the week asking you what you'd prefer me to record next and gRPC was the clear winner and I'd just like to say thanks to everyone that voted in that poll. Now as always the full text version of this tutorial will be available on my website so I'll leave a link to that in the description below. But for now let's dive into the wonderful world of gRPC. Now we'll start off with the theory and why it can be better in some, some situations when compared to more traditional setups like REST APIs. Now once we have a firm handle as to how G gRPC can benefit our systems, we'll then be taking a look at how we can build simple gRPC clients and servers that are written in Go. Now if you haven't already, I would recommend checking out my other tutorial which I've covered in a video on protocol buffers in Go. And again, I'll be leaving a link to that in the description below. Now, before you can complete this tutorial, you'll have to have the Proto-C buffer v3 installed in your machine. Um, and you can do that by running go get minus u github.com slash golang slash protobuf slash proto-c gen go. And you'll also have to ensure that the go path slash bin directory path is on your environment path so that you can use the Proto-C tool that is installed in that directory. So before we dive in, we first need to understand what gRPC is, how it works, and so on. Now, the definition is gRPC is a modern, open source, remote procedure call framework that can run anywhere. Now, remote procedure calls are something that we use within distributed systems that allow us to communicate between applications. More specifically, it allows us, it allows us to expose methods within our application that we want other applications to be able to invoke. It is similar to REST API communication in the sense that you are effectively exposing functionality within your app to other apps using HTTP slash TLS as a means of communication. Now, the differences between gRPC and REST. Um, while REST and gRPC are somewhat similar, there are some fundamental differences in how they work that you should be aware of. Now, the first one is gRPC utilizes HTTP2, whereas REST utilizes HTTP 1.1. Now, gRPC also utilizes the protocol buffer data format as opposed to the standard JSON data format that is typically used within REST APIs. Now this makes it far more performant and it makes the amount of data that you're transferring across the network a lot smaller. Now with gRPC, you can also utilize HTTP2 capabilities such as server-side streaming, client-side streaming, or even bi-directional streaming should you wish, which is really cool. Now you should bear in mind that whilst gRPC does allow you to utilize these newer bits of technology, it is also more challenging prototyping a gRPC service due to the fact that tools like Postman HTTP Client cannot be used to easily interact with your exposed gRPC service. You do have options that make this possible, but it's not something that's really or readily available natively. There are options to use tools such as Envoy to reverse proxy standard JSON requests, and transcode them into the right data format. But this is an additional dependency that can be tricky to set up for simple projects. So now that we've got the theory out of the way, let's start by defining a really simple gRPC server and go. Once we have a simple server set up and running, we can then set about creating a gRPC client that will be able to interact with it. Now we're gonna start off by creating a new file called server.go. And this will have package main, and we're gonna import log, and net for now, like so. And then we're going to define the main function, which is simply going to set up a connection or a listen connection on localhost port 9000. So we're going to do net.listen. And it's going to be using TCP. And as I said, it's going to be 9000, like so. Now, as we're getting an error, we're going to want to handle that. So if error does not equal nil, we're just going to do log.fatal. F and failed to listen on port 9000. And then we're going to pass in the error. Cool. Next, we're going to want to import the official gRPC package from golang.org. Uh, this will allow us to effectively create a new gRPC server and then register the endpoints that we want to expose before serving this over our existing TCP connection that we've defined here. So the package is located at google.golang.org slash gRPC. 
And with this in place, we can then go into the main function just below our listen logic and we can do grpc server is equal to grpc.new server. And then we want to do the following. So if error equals grpc server dot serve, then we're going to pass in the existing net dot listener. Um, if that returns an error, so if error is not equal to nil, then we want to do log.fatal if failed to serve uh, grpc server over port 9000. And again, we want to pass in the error like so. Cool. So this right here is the absolute minimum for a grpc server written in Go. However, at present, it doesn't exactly do much. So let's see about how we can change that now. So let's set about defining a simple chat service. Now, I want this chat service to receive messages from clients and then respond with its own message back. Now, this is a really simple example as to how gRPC works, but it lacked as a solid foundation upon which we can build more complex applications. And I'm expecting to go into more complex examples in the coming weeks. Now, the first thing we're going to do is define our contract or our chat.proto file. Now, within this, we're going to do syntax, not syntax, is equal to proto3. And we're going to say this is the chat package. And within this, we're going to define the message format that we're expecting from clients and that we're also going to be subsequently sending back to clients. And this is going to have a string called body, and this will be the first position. Now, we're also going to define the service in here. So the service is chat service. And within this, it's going to have a solitary say hello function, which can be called by any gRPC client written in any language. So RPC say hello, takes in a message and returns. Note that this is plural, not singular. Uh, a message. And that's all we need. Now, let's go ahead and generate the Go code or the specific gRPC code using the ProtoC tool based on this contract. Now, I'm going to open up the terminal and I'm going to do ProtoC. Actually, first of all, I'm going to do make their chat, which is going to contain our chat package. And then I'm going to do ProtoC go underscore out equals plugins equals gRPC chat and then I'm going to pass in chat.proto. Proto. Cool. So if we open up the directory, we can then see that this has created a chat.pb.go file. And you can have a look through this, but this basically de declares all of the, the functions that we need to do things like talk to our chat service or register our chat service in our gRPC server or client. Cool. Cool, so with this in place, we now have the code needed to automatically register and call the, uh, the likes of the say hello function within our chat service. However, we've not actually defined this say hello um, remote procedure call yet. So let's do that now by creating a new file within our chat directory called chat.go. This is again going to be part of the chat package. And I'm going to want to do the following. So I'm going to import log so that we can log out incoming requests and golang.org slash x slash net slash context so that we can get the context for the request. And within this, I want to define a type server struct, which will just be empty for now. But we're going to be defining methods off of this server struct. Um, and the first method we're going to do is s, which will take in a pointer to the server. And we're going to define the say hello RPC method. So this will take context.context .context, and it will take in a message which will be a pointer to a message. And this is going to be part of the chat package or part of the auto generated code in here. So we don't have to import anything here. This is going to be a defined struct that we can use. And this is going to return a message or error. Cool. So within this uh, hello or say hello method, we want to do log.printf 
uh, received, uh, spell that correctly, received message body from client. Uh, and this is going to be dollar sign or percentage s. And then I'm going to do message.body. Uh, I'm going to return a new message to the client that's calling this. So message. And the body is going to be hello from the server. Cool. Now I'm going to pass in nil as the final return uh, just for the error because we don't have any errors right now. Cool. With this in place, we're then going to want to modify our server.go file. We're going to want to we're going to first want to go mod init within this directory. So github.com slash tutorial edge slash go grpc uh, tutorial. And this will, this will then allow us to do uh, github.com slash tutorial edge slash go rpc tutorial slash chat so that we can import all the, all the code within this chat package. Uh, so let's do that now. So github.com slash tutorial edge slash go grpc tutorial slash chat. Now within this, we're then going to want to do the following. So find a new server. So s equals chat.server. We're then going to want to register the chat service server. So chat.register chat service server passing in our grpc server that we want to register this over and our server struct. Now with this in place, we then have a grpc server that is able to expose this function to grpc clients. So we can test running that now by going into our terminal and running go run uh, server.go and this should hopefully print out nothing as it has successfully started listening on localhost port 9000. Cool. So we've got all the code for our gRPC server up and running, but let's quickly recap what we've done here before we start going into the client side code. Now, we've defined a chat.proto file, which effectively acts as our gRPC server contract and says that we're going to be exposing a chat service that has a single method called say hello that expects a, a message and returns a message. Now we've then implemented this server and this method here. So this is the actual functionality of our um, chat service say hello method. We've also generated the code needed to register these methods to our gRPC um, server. And we've also updated our server.go so that it first creates a new instance of this chat.server and then registers it using the auto-generated method. This is quite a lot to get your head around and it took me quite a while to get my head around as well when I was initially learning it, but bear with it because it does eventually get simpler and it does eventually start to make sense in your head. Cool. So now that we have a gRPC server up and running, it's time to build the client that can interact with this server. Now I'm going to do this within the same directory, just to keep things nice and simple. And I'm going to call this client.go. Now again, this is going to be a separate executable, so I'm going to do package main. This is going to import the log package. It's going to import golang.org slash x slash net slash context. Uh, oops, I'm going to need to spell that right. Third time lucky. And we're going to want to import the gRPC package from golang.org. So google.golang.org slash gRPC. And then we want to do github.com slash tutorial edge slash go uh, gRPC tutorial slash chat. Perfect. Now let's define our main function. Now we want to do var connection as a pointer to a grpc.client connection. This connection or error is going to equal to grpc.dial. So this is effectively trying to connect into the running grpc server on localhost port 9000. And we're going to do dot with insecure, um, which creates an insecure connection. So it disables 
uh, transport security for this client connection. Cool. Now, as we're getting an error, let's again handle it. So if error does not equal nil, we want to do log.fatal and did or could not connect. Pass in the error like so. And we want to defer the connection close. So the next thing we want to do below this is to define uh, a chat service client. So we can do that by calling chat.new chat service client, passing in the connection. And then we can start interacting with our gRPC server. So we can do response or error is equal to C dot say hello. And um, we can pass in context dot background. And we want to do a message. So we'll do the message above actually, just to keep it nice and simple. So at chat dot message. Uh, actually we'll do message equals chat dot message. And the body is gonna be hello from the client. Awesome. So then we can do ampersand and message, passing that in. Cool. Once again, we get an error, so let's handle it. If error does not equal nil, log.fatalf, error when calling say hello. And again, pass in the error. And we get the response from this method. So log.printf response from server is equal to uh, this. And it'll be response.body. Cool. So I'm going to split my terminal. And I'm going to try and run this client code now. So go run client.go. And what we've we done wrong, client.go line 23, add the comma, try run it again. And as you can see, the client has successfully sent a message to our gRPC server, which is already up and running. And it has received the message hello from the server back to the client. Awesome. That's all we're going to cover in this tutorial. Now, we've been able to successfully create a gRPC server in Go as well as create a client which is able to interact with that server. Now, hopefully this has demystified some of the inner workings of how gRPC works. If it did and you enjoyed it, then please let me know in the comments section below, or if you have any comments as to what tutorials you'd like to see next, then again, please let me know in the comments section below. As always, please like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video. Cheers.